Hey guys, this is Matthew Armstrong with DitcherBox.com. Real quick, I just want to get out this message about the Confederate flag. Now I know it's, I'm a little late to the to uh, the race here when it comes to talking about the flag, but it just came up again. Two reasons. I was driving to Pensacola, Florida. I saw it twice. I saw a guy on the side of the road holding a big old Confederate flag, and I saw this guy in a truck. He had two massive Confederate flags. And then, just today, I had somebody post a photo of someone on a, 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 a truck with a Confederate flag on the back, and he posted a very disparaging remarks against that person and said they were an ignorant racist. Not, not because they knew him or had a conversation, but just because they had a Confederate flag on their vehicle. Now, here's the deal. I know this is uh, not normal, especially when you have people who... Uh, our culture so divided it's so easy to be manipulated but let me just challenge you to consider that if you think critically about the issues of prejudice and racism you might think twice about the way you assign prejudice and racism to other people for example that person who made the comment that this person was an ignorant racist because of a photo they saw on facebook i pointed out to them that they were actually doing the very thing they don't like they don't like racists. They don't like bigotry or, or ignorant um, prejudice. And yet that's exactly what they were committing. See, the reality is what the Confederate flag might mean to you is, oh, he must be racist. If you can make that kind of moral judgment against that person, you're no better than those, uh, those crazy people who said uh, people who were brown skin and wore turbans must hate America because all Muslims hate America and Muslims attacked us on 9-11 therefore if they weren't so ignorant or hateful or racist against us they would know not to wear a turban it's the same level of thinking that goes into uh, these people on these would be people you would consider liberals who were themselves racist um, and yet it doesn't it doesn't bother them. It, it doesn't hit them that, wait a second, I'm actually doing the very thing I'm against. And the reason it doesn't hit them, and this is what I find to be very ironic, is because the people in their crowd agree with them. They already know that their views are accepted and that most of the people that they are around or, or posting to or sharing with their friends uh, have the same view, which is exactly the justification for racism everywhere. It's the same reason that you have racism in the first place. If we were truly against racism and not just racism when it's committed by them, but we were really against it even when it was committed by our own team, then you would see a consistency in the principle that we exercise about human dignity and human life that racism is just wrong, period. So I'm willing to stand up to people who uh, are, are racist against people I don't like. Guess what? It doesn't give just because I don't I might not agree with somebody or I might not even like a person doesn't justify being racist towards them. Why? Because racism in principle is wrong. But we don't have that kind of thinking in this kind of emotionalized, hyper stimulated culture that's trying to continually divide us. And this is the part that drives me the most up the wall is the fact that the people that are doing this kind of stuff that don't have the deeper level of, of thinking to have a commitment to the principle of, of human rights and the principle against racism but instead just kind of pick and choose when it's convenient they they want to they, they want a world where you don't have racism and yet the very actions they're taking are promoting the divisions that they abhor so they abhor that same level of thinking when it's against uh, in this case, I'm sure when it, if it's against a black person or a Muslim, and by the way, I do too. I absolutely abhor when I have run into racism uh, towards blacks, or in my case, I ran into a lot towards Pakistanis when I lived in England and India and all these places. It doesn't matter if it's America or anywhere or if it's against white people. I experienced racism just because of the color of my skin, and it absolutely disgusted me in each one of those cases. It was wrong. It wasn't right just because when it was against me, now it justifies me being racist against black people. That's ridiculous, and it doesn't stand for anything. It gives you absolutely no moral power behind your argument. So we need people who actually care about the, the, the true issue of racism to say, you know what, we're going to unite people. 
We're not going to divide each other and say we want certain rights for certain people and certain rights for other types of people. No, you know what? We're going to unify around human rights and human freedom and liberty and, and human dignity. It doesn't matter who you are, what color you are. Racism is wrong. And if you took that kind of stand and practice it consistently, you'd be surprised how many of your enemies would actually come over to your side because there's a power behind the truth of that kind of conscious statement. It's very attractive because it's self-evident. And that's what we need, more people who are willing to stand up for the principle and let's unite around that rather than a certain color or a certain person or a certain type of movement. Guys, I'm asking you, think critically. When you see stuff on television, when you hear the news media, when you see people on Facebook that are okay with making ignorant, prejudiced remarks against someone because they're white or because they have a Confederate flag or because they're Muslim or because they're black. It doesn't matter who they are or where it comes from. Be the person that says consistently, I won't allow for that. That's, that's not right. And it's only through us having that shift in consciousness towards a more holistic vision of human life and, and human dignity and that racism doesn't have a place here. It doesn't matter who's doing it or, or who it's against, even if it's my own brother whose racism is, is being justified by everybody else, I'm going to call him out on it. Um, that's my thoughts on the Confederate flag. By the way, last comment on this, you have to know something about the Confederate flag. It means something entirely different to a Southerner who is proud of their Southern heritage that, by the way, doesn't mean that they're racist. Believe it or not, you can be proud of your Southern heritage and those who fought against racism in the, in the South who were Southerners and, and not be a racist. So you have Southerners who are very proud of their Southern heritage, and if you were to talk to them about it, they would give you a lot of reasons why that would blow your mind that have very little to do, actually nothing at all to do with race, and everything to do with the kind of, uh, of heritage and principles that they stood for. And it's easy, easy to pick on uh, the South, of course. They're always portrayed as stupid and dumb in movies and these kind of ignorant folks. But in fact, if you actually look and research what happened in the South and what was really the factors behind the Confederate flag now becoming this kind of racist symbol, it is so out of touch with the reality. You even have Martin Luther King, guys. Martin Luther King was part of a movement against racism and one of their symbols, you can look it up, was a white guy and a black guy holding hands in front of the Confederate flag. Um, I wish I could remember the name of the group, but I'll try to put it in the show notes, I mean, in the description below. But Martin Luther King used the Confederate flag as a symbol for part of the, the network he was a part of, uh, standing up for rights as part of the Southern heritage, as identifying with the South. Interesting stuff. Okay, I'm going to shut up now. Um, to be clear, I'm against racism in all forms. If you hear what I have to say as some kind of apologist for racists or white racists or southern racists or whatever, you are not listening to me. If you know, uh, if you understand what I'm saying, would you leave a comment below? If this was something that meant something to you, would you stand up with me and let me know what you think? I appreciate your time. Thank you for listening. This is Matthew Armstrong with Ditch Your Box.